Hey, what's going on, everyone? How are you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And, you know, Netflix has been on this weird, weird canceling spree for, like, the longest time. If you like something and it gets past two seasons, the likelihood of it getting three and being canceled seems higher and higher and higher. We saw this with the Marvel Netflix series. We saw this with One Day at a Time, uh, which was somehow able to move away from Netflix and get over to Pop Channel. Um, but uh, some reason Daredevil is still stuck on a, on a, on a two year hiatus while we wait for that whole cool down period to end. But one of the, the most recent casualties, and this is one that a lot of people are upset about is that the OA was canceled after two seasons, the TV series created by Britt Marling and Zal Batman, uh, Jili, Jalij, I can't pronounce that. I apologize. Uh, featured contributions from um, Rostam and Sharon Van Etten. Okay, anyway, uh, the Netflix is the OA uh, will not be returning for a third season, according to The Hollywood Reporter. The show, which premiered in December 2016, I want you to pay attention to that. December 2016 starred Marling as a young woman who, after vanishing for seven years, returns home with a mysterious new power. Uh, the OA also featured Sharon Van Etten, um, and the uh, the final season was released back in March. Now, the way, though, if you think about it for a second, right, the way that they kind of uh, say that is, oh, the final season aired in March. It wasn't just the final season. It was the second season. So you had... Uh, December 2016 was the release of the first season, which was like eight episodes and they were not all an hour long. Some of them, like one of them was as low as 28 minutes. It's a very weird kind of, uh, artsy aesthetic approach to the show. And then they waited until March of 2019, almost two and a half years later for another season to pop up. And so much has changed on Netflix since then. Uh, it has, and I'll talk about that now. According to Cindy Holland, who is Netflix head of original, she says, we are incredibly proud of the 16 mesmerizing chapters of the OA, and we are grateful to Brit and Zal for sharing their audacious vision and realizing it through their incredible artistry. We look forward to working with them again in the future in this and perhaps many other dimensions. Now, the thing with that you have to remember here is... They, of course, are going to say, hey, listen, we had a good time working with them. They put out the show. Uh, clearly, there's there's a there's there's a fan petition right now to save it. Uh, people are trying to keep the OA around uh, Netflix, you know, maybe might do something to where it's not so much save the OA, but give it a proper finale. But even coming over here to Rotten Tomatoes, we can see that it does have an average. This is for both seasons, an average tomato meter of 84 percent and an average audience score of 83 percent. So it is doing pretty well. But. Let's just kind of jump down here to take a, a better look. So the OA season one is that the critical consensus is that the OA is more than okay. Now, I have seen season one. I have not seen season two. Season one was interesting, but it loses itself so often in what it's trying to say that it becomes this very daunting task uh, to finish. And then the end of the season was such one of those cliffhangers that in modern society, in modern day, could not be done. It ends with a, with a, with a shooting, with a school shooting, is where season one ends. And it was an interesting cliffhanger. Um, but then season two goes into this, uh, it says, provides satisfying answers to its predecessor's most maddening enigmas, all while maintaining the singular ambience that fans have come to crave. Now, I'm going to spoil a little bit on season two, just, and you can find this information out there, but it has a lot to do with uh, with the OA, with Prairie Johnson is, is Britt Marling's name there. Uh, she goes to another dimension and ends up helping a detective in San Francisco try to solve the case of a missing girl who has essentially been taken by someone who's like the jigsaw killer 2.0, all while in this dimension, her newfound uh, OA support team is now trying to find her by going on a cross country road trip. At the same time, she's trying to locate the other people that she was trapped with, uh, where she first learned that she had these powers. It's such a weird convoluted story that loses itself so often. And what Brit and Zal are trying to do. Now I've seen some of their other work and they're both very talented in their filmmaking. They're both very talented in their storytelling, but this was a problem. Ultimately, of the fact that uh, they waited so long in between seasons, people stopped caring. And that's where Netflix is right now, by the way. The reason why the OA was canceled is because they waited so long it wasn't bringing in new subscribers. This is one of the things Netflix has going forward that's a negative right now. They're investing up to $15 billion worth of content this year alone. 
15 billion of content just this year. And the thing is they need the subscribers. And if a show isn't bringing them the subscribers, they're going to cancel it, right? They canceled the Marvel Netflix show simply because of, of Disney plus they canceled, uh, they canceled a bunch of shows because it's not bringing in new, new people. And then the criticism becomes, well, you're not promoting it enough. When I go to LA, I see Netflix billboards all over the damn place. I see them everywhere in LA, but the rest of the world is what counts. At least the rest of the country in North America is what counts. Netflix doesn't do promotion outside of like its Twitter feed. And this could potentially be saved. This could potentially be fixed if they were to run maybe 10, 15 second adverts for other Netflix originals on their shows in order to, to raise awareness because a lot of people out there don't know. They get lost in the shuffle of Netflix. And this is, again, one of the problems of Netflix going out and absolutely positively just buying up everything and, and overloading the market so that when the time comes for people to come and watch something, they spend more time thumbing through rather than actually watching. And Netflix uses that as a way to cancel shows, to save money, but to keep people paying out the monthly subscription because they might see something that they like. As much as I love Netflix, I understand and, and, and can see the problems with it. But when I look at something like the OA and I look at why it was canceled, right? It has a lot to do with the fact that the filmmakers were not kept to a standard season release one time per year they didn't have that two and a half years without a damn peep almost without a damn peep it brought them to this particular point mine hunters is in a very similar situation released in august of 2017 season two drops j next friday and a lot of people are excited because they're starting to talk about it it's 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 a compelling enough show and the trailer was really good bringing back a lot of your faves from the first season while talking about the next killer that they're going to go track down becomes an interesting conversation. Netflix and true crime has done very well over the span of the last couple of years. So there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tune in for Mindhunters because that's where their current entertainment get is at, right? The Ted Bundy movie, the, the, the Ted Bundy tapes, uh, making a murderer. Uh, you could even say American Vandal. All of those things have done well to really add to the true crime aspect of Netflix. And all of those have come out in the previous couple of years, with the exception of making a murderer, which is the fall of 2015. Uh, but still, or the, maybe the fall of 2016, I forget, but the whole point is that the OA was such an obscure science fiction based show that didn't do any cross promotion with Netflix. They waited two and a half years for the, for the second season to come out and no one talked about it outside of the fans that are apparently dedicated enough to try to get it saved, but didn't do enough to promote it in the social space. And that is why it canceled. Uh, I don't feel bad that the show canceled because the show, in my opinion, wasn't that good. Uh, I felt the first season, which I watched twice because I had food poisoning the first time. And I was like, this is just what? And I went back and I watched it again. What I was not impressed with it. It was OK, but it wasn't impressive. Season two, based upon just the descriptions that I've read. We're, we're just okay. I'm I'm tired of these multiple universes. I'm tired of these like multiple timelines. Tell me a coherent, cohesive story. And that's where they screwed themselves. Maybe they'll be able to find another home for the show. Maybe Netflix will listen to the fans to give them a finale. Maybe the Netflix will go, listen, we'll give you a two hour uh, series finale like we did with Sense8 and give you guys the conclusion to the show that you clearly, clearly like. And with any luck, they'll get that. And I do hope they get that. But I also understand completely why Netflix can the series. And I don't feel bad as a result. So I leave it to you, your thoughts, your opinions. Are you okay with this? Are you upset about this? Let me know if you're mad. Let me know why. Let me know what the show means to you. If that's exactly how you feel, I'd like to know more about that. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by leaving a like, try to get to 200. I don't think we're going to get there, but let's try to get to 200. Uh, you can comment, you can subscribe or check out wheelman, uh, youtube.com forward slash wheelman vlog. This is my vlog series where I kind of hang out and uh, go to different stores and, and vlog what I see. I got a Walmart one here, a Funko HQ out of Everett, uh, Tacoma Mall. I, mean, I got a bunch from Comic-Con, Galaxy's Edge, and a few other things coming down the pipeline. So those are there. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.